So, Burger King recently launched a new advertising campaign in which a man and a woman would walk up to the counter and order some of their chicken fries. These are essentially long, thin chicken nuggets, um, usually served in a delightful box which looks like a chicken. So the man would be given his chicken fries in a normal box, and the woman would be given hers in a pink box with the chicken, you know, done up with lipstick and things like that to make it look like a girl chicken. The man would be informed that he'd be paying $1.69 for his chicken fries, and the woman would be charged three oh nine for her chicken fries, for the, the same amount of chicken fries. This advertising campaign is meant to draw attention to the so-called pink tax, the idea that women are charged more than men for these same products just because the women's products are pink, or rather marketed towards them, towards women. Before I begin getting into this video and what I think is wrong with it, um, this video as in the commercial that Burger King released, and the idea behind it, I just want to say that I am 100% in favor of removing taxes from feminine hygiene products. I have seen the pink tax referred to as that tax on feminine hygiene products, things like tampons or sanitary napkins, um, the tax which is levied on those. I am 100% in favor of eliminating those taxes. Uh, those products are necessary for women to go about their lives and menstruation is not something that women can control right they menstruate women menstruate and the products to control that menstruation right to um, contain the flow of blood right to absorb it into a product which keeps everything hygienic is a necessity to women. So I am 100% in favor of repealing those taxes, taxes levied on feminine hygiene products. However, we're not talking about those products with regards to this new advertising campaign by Burger King. Um, a snippet here of ABC News says, according to a study by the NYC Department of Consumer Affairs, the most common examples, examples of the pink tax, are found in the drugstore. At most major retailers, women's razors and razor cartridges cost an average of 11% more than men's, and that difference balloons to 48% when comparing shampoo and conditioning products. And then goes on to talk about uh, different prices for dry cleaning. And then at the bottom, we can see that the Pink Tax Repeal Act um, is the act which is noted at the end of the Burger King commercial. If you watch the commercial through to the end, it says at the end, support the Pink Tax Repeal Act, which would give state attorneys general, so state attorneys general, that is the plural of attorney general, the authority to take civil action on behalf of aggrieved customers. So this tax <clears throat> that we're talking about, the pink tax, um, mentioned in the Burger King advertisement is not the tax on feminine hygiene products, but rather this, what I'm going to perhaps demonstrate, the imagined quote-unquote tax, which is levied by consumer product manufacturers on products that are marketed to women, and that price is charged to women simply because the product is pink or marketed towards women. So I actually went out and did my own highly scientific research into this topic. Up first, we're going to talk about body wash. I tried to choose products that were made by the same company um, and were of the same sort of product, right? So Dove Men Plus Care is sort of their uh, premier line for men. And the women's product I'll show in just a moment looked to be sort of the premier line of women's product. Um, looking at the men's product, we see it's 459 
for 13 and a half ounces. That works out to 34 cents per ounce for men's body wash, specifically men's body wash. And now what we're looking at is the Dove, you know, more feminine, more purely pampering. You know, it has all these lovely botanicals. It has, you know, uh, what is that? Shea butter with warm vanilla, things like that. These products are $7.49 for 22 ounces, which, when you do the math, works out to be almost exactly 34 cents once again. Right? The women's product is more expensive on the shelf, but you get more of it. Of these body washes, there are even cheaper ones. There were ones that were, you know, the same size bottle for less money. Like I said, in terms of the men's products, there's very few. And then with regards to the women's products, or ones that look more feminine, uh, there certainly are more. This one seemed to be, you know, pretty nice, but they roughly equate out in terms of price per ounce. Next up, we have uh, men's deodorant. So the one I want you to focus on is the one to the far right. And I know it's not the one in the center of the shot, but it's the Men Degree Motion Sense Active Shield 3-Layer Odor Protection. You know, this is the most expensive sort of deodorant on the shelf for men. And this one is $4.35 for a stick. The stick is 2.7 ounces, and that comes out to $1.61 per ounce of deodorant. Looking at the women's version, this is, once again, Degree Motion Sense Active Shield, three-layer odor protection. You know, really the same product, just in a slightly different packaging. Uh, if there's any doubt as to this being a women's product, you can see the one on the right has some fancy dresses uh, pictured there. This deodorant won't stain your fancy dresses. These sticks are also 435 and these sticks are 2.6 ounces. So it works out to $1.67 or $1.67 per ounce for the women's deodorant, which is a 3% difference. There is a 3% difference between the men's and the women's version of the same product. And I'll grant that, I'll allow that, but it's far from the 11% or the 48% or the nearly double uh, that the Burger King pink box of chicken fries cost. You know, it is a difference, but it's a difference of 3%. Moving on to razors. This is, as far as I can see in these videos about the pink tax and about how women are being taken advantage of by uh, manufacturers of products. Um, Razor seems to be the battlefield upon which the most blood has been spilled. Uh, Razors are just, they are just taking advantage of women at every turn. You know, the ABC article mentions 11% difference. So let's see if that pans out in terms of a more of an apples to apples comparison. So, we have these Gillette Sensor 2 razors. These are men's razors, two blades, blue handle, and you get 15. So you get 12 plus 3 bonus. For the purposes of this video, um, I will be counting the entire package of razors. Don't worry, the women's also have bonus razors. Um, But these companies do not give you free stuff. They took into account how much 15 razors cost and charged you a certain amount. The plus three bonus razors, wow, that's a marketing tactic to make you buy their razors. But these razors are $9.99 for 15 razors. That works out to 66 cents per, <coughs> excuse me, per razor. Let me move on to the Gillette Daisy. Ooh, these are also two bladed razors from Gillette. These ones are pink. This package gets you 12 razors plus one Venus, simply three. So you actually get a fancy razor included with these women's razors. But we'll just pretend it's one of the normal Gillette daisies. So for $7.89, you get 13 razors. That works out to $0.60 cents 
per razor, 60 cents per razor. So men's razors are 66 cents per, and women's razors are 60 cents per. It seems to me like maybe there's a blue tax, a men tax, right? It's uh, disadvantageous in this world to be a man, right? And of course, I'm joking. I don't believe that. I don't believe that women are disadvantaged either, at least as far as their disposable razors go. But wait, I hear you shouting. The article mentions the uh, refills, you know, the head refills for the non-disposable razors. So looking at these, we have the Schick Quattro Titanium. These are the manly er, titanium version of uh, razor blades. You get six blades in this box for eleven ninety nine. That works out to one dollar and ninety nine cents per refill head. Then you have the Schick Quattro for women, right? This one's specifically for women. Uh, it's very pretty in pink, has flowers all over it. In this box of six, it costs you eleven seventy five. So that works out to one dollar and ninety no ninety five cents for this smaller package of six. Then for the larger value pack ooh, of 10 razors, uh, 1965, it actually costs you $1.96 per razor. So it's actually a better deal uh, for all of you bargain hunters out there to get the smaller box of Chic Quattro for women. Now, I didn't look at every single product or every single product category. Is it possible that I could find women's products that are much more expensive than men's products. Of course, of course I could. Right now we're looking at a bottle of Chanel hand cream. So for 50 milliliters, that's 1.7 ounces, you pay $50. Now, you know, it's not up to me to decide if that's worth your money. Because right now we're looking at a Bugatti Chiron. Right? This car which is mostly marketed to men. These sorts of cars, these sorts of sports cars are mostly marketed to men. This car costs $3 million, right? So whether it's a, you know, a $50 bottle of hand cream for women or a $3 million sports car marketed towards men, right? Should it be up to the government? Should the attorneys general of a state be allowed to sue a company to act on the behalf of aggrieved customers, right? Should I be able to sue Chanel because their hand cream's too expensive? Or should I be able to sue Bugatti because their cars are too expensive? And to what end? To make Chanel's hand cream less expensive? Well, then maybe Chanel just stops making hand cream, right? Or to make a Bugatti Chiron less expensive? Well, then maybe Bugatti doesn't make the Chiron, Right? We live in a world with hundreds of products, thousands of products of varying quality, varying price, and varying marketing, right? I don't necessarily think that a bottle of Chanel hand cream or this bag you're looking at, right? This leather bag by a company called Hermes, right? This bag sells for like $14,000. I don't think that the quality inherent in these products dictates the price but it's the marketing it's the branding right and in some cases it is that the product is better right a bottle of seven dollar shampoo might just work for your hair way better than a bottle of two dollar shampoo right and suing a company because it's aggrieved you because oh no your your product is more expensive right your your women's hand cream is more expensive from chanel than a bottle of lotion from suave Right. So, you know, suddenly that company is not making that seven dollar bottle of shampoo that you like right now. It has to make a two dollar bottle of shampoo. Right. Because otherwise it's 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 discriminating against women. Right. And now you don't get the shampoo you like or Bugatti can't make a car because, oh, no, you know, Toyotas, those are marketed more towards women. So, you know, now Bugatti has to make, you know, a, a, a women friendly car. Right or whatever, right? Allowing the government to decide how much a company charges for its products is ridiculous. Just buy a different product, right? And from my findings, the products 
are not massively different in price. There's enough market penetration. There are enough brands making enough different products to allow you to make that choice, right? If there is literally one, you know, a, only one women's razor, like only one company in the entire world knew how to make the super magical razor that only works for women. Like if a man touches it, it just, it just explodes into dust, right? It's only for women and only women can use it. And it only works on women. And that product was $10,000, right? Yeah. I would say, okay, we have to make that cheaper, right? Similar to those auto injectors for people with allergic reactions. And there was a big to do about how expensive those were. And that company acted in bad faith and it abused the way that insurance companies decide on alternatives to the quote unquote name brand auto injector, right? That's an abuse. That's an abuse of the system. But these razor blades or bottles of shampoo, right? There are so many companies making shampoo, so many companies making razor blades. Just buy the ones that fit within your budget. Like I said at the beginning, I do think that the tax on feminine hygiene products should be removed. But that doesn't mean that, you know, one company can't make a $10 tampon and one company can't make a 99 cent tampon, right? Because maybe that $10 tampon is just way better. It's just much more comfortable and, and people are willing to pay that extra money for it, right? The idea that you can't charge more for a different product is ridiculous. And finally, why do I think that Burger King is doing this? Why do I think that Burger King is launching this ad campaign? Do I think that Burger King really cares about the pink tax that much? No, I, I, I really don't. I truly don't. Burger King doesn't make gendered products. They don't make boy and girl products. They make, you know, hamburgers and french fries and stuff. I think that Burger King honestly is, is feeling the effects of making subpar food. I think that Burger King food is disgusting, personally. I think that almost any other fast food joint, right, McDonald's is better. And McDonald's is not very good. I think that Burger King is literally disgusting. And I think that instead of focusing on their products and increasing the quality of their products, right, they'd rather just use cheap marketing tactics to try to win some sympathy points. So I don't think that Burger King is acting in good faith. Even if they were, the pink tax, in my opinion, doesn't exist. And if it does, right, if you go into a store and your pink razors are twice the price of the blue men's razors, then buy the blue men's razors, right? Why buy the pink ones? Just buy the blue ones, right? Make the companies realize that they can't get away with that, right? Because once you involve the government and deciding prices of things, now suddenly you're suing Chanel for making an $8,000 handbag, right? You're suing Bugatti for making a $3 million car, right? And those are extreme examples, but you know what I mean. And now suddenly Chanel can't offer a quality handbag anymore. Suddenly Bugatti can't make the Chiron anymore. It can't sell a Chiron for the price of a Camry, and it doesn't have the facilities to make a Camry. So now Bugatti goes out of business and you can't even choose to purchase that product, right? You can't choose to purchase the $9 shampoo because, oh no, that's unfair to women. It has to be $2. Well, we can't make this fancy shampoo for $2. So you just get the, the less good shampoo. And before I start rambling and going off on a tangent, um, I'm just going to end it there, right? I don't think... Burger King is acting in good faith, and I don't think that this advertising campaign really makes me want their chicken products at all. I think it's a really bad advertising campaign, quite frankly. So let me know what you guys think. Make your own videos. Make your own investigations. Go out to your own Walmart, your own Target. Find the prices for your products, and you know, make your own video. You know, Prove me wrong if I'm wrong. And you guys have a nice day.